Ain't no land of misinformation, I'm the truth seeker Cut through the lies like a blade, I'm a fat checker It's black communications, the social need to follow The last fake news, exposing them all tomorrow I'm on a mission, fighting for the information No room for deception, it's time for retaliation It's black communications, we set the record straight Real news, no filters, just the facts we dedicate Fake news spreading like an epidemic outbreak But I won't back down, I'll be the one to make them choke Black communications, not that relevant until it's false and all the lies Watch a burn in hell Good day ladies and gentlemen, Rosa here of Splat Communications Before we start may we request dear followers, viewers and subscribers to please don't skip ads this will help us a lot to continue the work that we do. Thank you. Likewise, may we request those who have not subscribed yet to please do so. Kindly make it a habit to like the videos but more importantly, share it so you can help us in our fight against fake news, misinformation and disinformation. So what are they really doing here in the Philippines? A Chinese citizen who was arrested a several weeks ago for pointing a gun in Makati City also yielded high-tech and military-grade gadgets, which had the police asking questions as regards their use. Among the items seized by the police from his place of arrest were various gadgets, an equipment set with circuit boards, a portable power station, a military-grade drone, a high-powered firearm, and a bundle of 1,000 peso bills. One incident too many. Na inquest na ang dalawang inarest ng Chinese nationals sa tagi dahil sa nakuwang high-powered firearm, mga bala, tactical vest, at helmet na may markings ng China. Ang kanilang kaso, illegal possession of firearms and ammunition at corruption of public official. Ayon sa NCRPO, nakumpirma na walang rehisto ang narecover na high-powered rifle. Nung una, itinanggi ng inarest ng Chinese na sa kanya ang baril. Pero sa eksklusibong panayam ng GMA News ngayon, nagbago na ang sagot niya. China, ah, uh, siya ay isang mga Sabi niya po, nung naglalaro siya sa shooting range, meron pong Chinese na friend na nakipag, nakipag-swap siya ng isang motor and then binalik sa kanya ay yung barel. At yung tao na po ngayon ay nasa China na. Why do you have to possess a firearm here in the Philippines? Uh, uh, ang gusto niya lang po maglaro at pumunta sa shooting range para mag, uh, mag, uh, mag-shoot, mag-play lang daw po. Ayon pa sa si NCRPO, nagsasagawa pa sila ng mas malalim na investigasyon. Iba-iba yung alias na or pangalan na binigay niya. Iba-iba yung mga pangalan na ginagamit niya. Nang silipin ng papeles ng mamahaling sports car ng suspect, nabisto daw ng NCRPO at ng Bureau of Customs na in-undervalue ang idiniklarang halaga nito ng ipasok sa bansa. Batay sa papeles ng BOC, 4.9 million pesos lamang ang binayad na tax. Pero dapat may ipadoble o 10 million ang dapat binayarang buwis. Ayon pa sa si NCRPO, Nakatitini rin ang kasamahan ng suspect na nagtangka umanong maluhol sa arresting team para pakawalan ang Chinese sa halaga umanong 3 million pesos. Bakit biglang mayroong 3 million pang threat? Bakit may high-powered? Bakit mayroong, mayroong uh, luxury cars? Sino ang source? Paano sila nagkaroon ng uh, uh, barel at bala? Uh, titignan natin. Bogo Workers Philippine Offshore Gaming Operators the operation of POGOs under Duterte's administration led to a massive influx of Chinese workers. By 2019, estimates suggested there were over 150,000 to 300,000 Chinese nationals working in the POGO sector. This not only transformed parts of Manila but also sparked concerns about national security and illegal activities associated with POGO operations. Cases of money laundering, human trafficking, sex trafficking, kidnapping, prostitution, illegal drugs, cyber crimes like hacking, internet scams, surveillance and other illegal activities such as unregistered pogo operations and working without permits have also increased exponentially. If it can be argued that pogo provided jobs for the Filipinos, these Chinese nationals are also taking away jobs from the Filipinos here in our own country. The harm caused by Chinese pogo operations here have caused major problems for the government. But wait there's definitely more. Pogo's Philippine Real Estate Economic Footprint 
property ownership. Chinese nationals have increasingly been purchasing land and property in the Philippines. Although the Philippine Constitution restricts land ownership to Filipino citizens, there are legal loopholes, such as setting up corporations that allow foreigners to own up to 40% of the property. Reports indicate a significant number of high-end real estate purchases in major cities, particularly in Metro Manila, Cebu, and Davao, are attributed to Chinese buyers. Here are a few examples. Pogo Island in Cavita, a 36-hectare former resort in Cavita, known as Island Cove, has been converted into a Pogo Island complex. This property, previously owned by the Rimola family, was reportedly sold in 2018 to unnamed Chinese Filipino investors engaged in Pogo operations. The island could accommodate over 20,000 workers. Land acquisition near EDCA sites. The National Bureau of Investigation has begun looking into the reported large-scale land acquisitions by Chinese nationals near EDCA sites. Land acquisition in Bamban, Tarlac, Alice Lilgua, the mayor of Bamban, a small town in the Philippines, has been linked to a pogo operation located in the Baofu compound in Bamban. The compound was raided due to a warrant that stemmed from reports of alleged serious illegal detention and human trafficking on foreign nationals. Real Estate Impact The rapid expansion of pogos in the country has put a strain on local infrastructure, including transportation, utilities, and housing. The adverse effects include displacement of local residents due to rising property prices. Pogos have utilized at least 800,000 square meters, 8,600,000 square feet of office space. Philippine Passports Use of Philippine Identity There has been a noticeable rise in the number of Chinese citizens acquiring Philippine passports, often through investment schemes or marriages. Others through fraudulent means. Reports have mentioned that the Chinese mafia is behind the issuance of Philippine birth certificates from the Philippine Statistics Authority that eventually enables Chinese citizens to apply for Philippine passports and get Filipino identity. This raises concerns about the dilution of national identity and potential exploitation of the country's resources. An official from the Philippine Statistics Authority discloses that some foreigners used fake birth certificates to obtain Philippine passports. In a radio interview, PSA Assistant National Statistician Marisa Grande says that in coordination with the Department of Foreign Affairs, they have validated that six foreigners with Philippine passports submitted birth certificates indicating that they are Filipinos. However, the documents were found to be altered. She notes that some of the six fake birth certificates were registered in the Civil Registry Office. PSA says it is coordinating with the DFA to determine where the six foreigners obtained their documents. She added that the PSA likewise seeks additional information on other foreigners suspected of presenting a fake birth certificates to the DFA. In a plenary... China's influence on national and local politics. Political influence. Suspected Chinese influence in politics. Aside from former President Rodrigo Duterte's obvious China-centric foreign and economic policies, there is a personality that came to fore several weeks ago. The case of Alice Gua, the Chinese-Filipino mayor of Bamban, Tarlac, has been cited as an example of possible Chinese political influence. While her election in itself is not conclusive evidence of clandestine occupation, it highlights the growing presence of Chinese individuals in strategic positions within the country. Geopolitical Implications of China's Failing Economy Just one other story today you should know about. China's economy last year posted one of its worst economic performances in about three decades as the world's second largest economy dealt with a failing property market and weak consumption. China's GDP lifted 5.2% in 2023. It's an improvement on 2022 when it grew 3%. But outside of the pandemic years, that 5.2% growth in 2023 is the worst performance since the 1990 recession. As tens of millions of Chinese youths leave school, jobs are few and far between. More than one in five are now officially unemployed, dashing their hopes for a better life. How did the world's second largest economy end up here? The post-COVID recovery <laughs> has been weaker in China than in many other countries. No question about it. And will it spell disaster for China and its leaders? 
Thomas I have found the strong links between youth and former rape and the drugs, crime rate and uh, many other issues. It goes beyond the young people themselves. In plain English, this means upwards of half a billion people in China are living on less than $10 per day, primarily those that are still living out in rural areas. China's economy has been facing significant challenges, including slowing growth rates, a massive real estate bubble, and increasing debt. These economic woes may drive China to seek more aggressive expansion of its influence in neighboring countries, including the Philippines, as part of its Belt and Road Initiative. And for all intents and purposes, this is what is happening not only to the Philippines but in many other parts of the world. Thank you Fairy Koi for being a channel member. In a world unfolding, where stories come alive amidst the chaos. Please support Splat Communication Channel memberships. For small amounts per month, you would be able to help us continue our fight against fake news and disinformation. We have three levels of memberships. Splat Beginner, Splat Intermediate Plus, and Super Splat. Channel members have the any or all of the following perks. Loyalty badge, priority reply to messages, members only live chat, in video and live video shoutouts, early access to videos, connecting to social media, free and discounted merchandise. Hurry! Please become a channel member now. Hello everyone, welcome to Splat Communications. Your channel for Shout reliable, out. relevant and Estella accurate Rosa. information regarding I want to be free. surveys. Marieta Cabudon, politics, Marit Tumara, lifestyle, email up travel and technology. Maria Teresa Malin, Amjan, Ferdinand Landrito, Jose Halina, Ernesto de los Santos, Vic Madamba, Marino Alispo, Marvi de la Cruz, Teresita Rojas Cosos, Aida Cruz, Tomas Paxolinan. Elisio Ducusin, Edgardo Pangilinan, Kurt Di Mayasha, Ramon Ramos, Bold Cap, Bokling Vicente, Leonardo Tando, Loreto Manansala, Rob Akad, Pratt, Beef Joy, Ildefonso Hinko, Don Claro, Sonny Veloria, Rex TV Adventure, Grevy Mardayag, Kasundo Motovlog, Irene Odada, Julene Bran, Randy David, Ed Soliman, Amar Jimmy, Josema, Victory. Misinformation, I'm the truth seeker Cut through the lies like a blade I'm a fat checker It's black communications The social need to follow The mask and fake news Exposing them all tomorrow I'm on a mission Fighting for the information No room for deception It's time for retaliation It's black communications We set the record straight Real news, no filters Just the facts we dedicate Fake news spread like an epidemic outbreak But I won't back down, I'll be the one to make them choke Black communications, not that relevant until it's posting all the lies 